time to begin. <laughs> it's so cute when they're up there in, in the sound room and not anybody's paying attention and they're up there waving and waving and waving. And, and uh, so good morning, Facebook. They're waving at me to get it started. So um, we are so glad that you're with us. We're, bit, we're down in number. We got a lot of people out sick, but um, we are so glad that you're here. Glad that we have Facebook so that uh, those that are sick, if um, they have a good time later on, they can can uh, possibly join us. Co uh, Kevin, Roger, do you need something? Yeah, I thought somebody's phone is back. Did somebody leave their phone somewhere? Somebody's phone was missing. Everybody check and find out if that's yours. I think that's Roger. Roger? Hurts? Uh, okay. All right. Well, they think they found the phone. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. And uh, we would just like for you to stand with us now and join with us as we sing Count Your Blessings. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, last Sunday we had a bulletin with an insert in it that the deacons ask if you weren't feeling well that you to stay home. I just didn't know everybody was going to read it. <laughs> so, welcome to the Orville Baptist Church Bible Study this morning. <laughs> we do have a number of people that have called in and, uh, and need prayer. Uh, because some illness that they have, have, have and so we, we do want to pray for them in just a minute. And, uh, but 
We want to lift up our voices in praise this morning and ask uh, if you have a praise that's on your heart that you just want to share that uh, will show us how great our God is this morning. All right, Tara. All right. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> yes. And uh, welcome to Ohio in the winter. <laughs> yeah. All right. Somebody else? Yes, Pat, in the back. I just wanted to praise God because my daughter who was lost is now found. Oh, wow. <laughs> She's been busy for like six months. And I mess she messaged me on Facebook right before Thanksgiving, and we've been communicating, and she's okay. All right. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. We're so happy for you, Pat. Yes. Pauline. I, we're just thankful, especially for God's grace and healing, because you all know that Dale was in the hospital, and they come up with different scenarios and it came out to be something that wasn't a big deal, but it was all God. He yeah. laid his hand on him and said, brother, go home. Yeah. So thank you, Lord. All right. Yes. We're glad you're with us today, Dale. Yes. Yeah, Harry. I just want to praise God today. Uh, this week I had my blood work done. Uh, I got a report on Tuesday. My PSA was down to 0 0.8 and stable. All right. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Cancer free for another visit. Yes. Praise the Lord for that. Yes. Okay. Um, as you can see, we've got the Christmas decorations up, and I want to thank Cindy and Chrissy put together a lot of decorations for us. Uh, they're very crafty people, <laughs> and um, they came and helped to decorate the tree. Chrissy always has a great idea. Uh, Brandon and Josh, Pauline, everybody that showed up, I know we just can't do it by ourselves, and I'm just appreciative of everybody that is willing to come and spend five minutes, we told Brandon five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours later, he did an excellent job. Yes, he got that five minutes in, huh? All right, just happened to be at the end. <laughs> so, I have a praise that my sister a year ago in December had breast cancer and had surgery, and we just had the appointment with her surgeon, and there's no sign of any recurrence thus far. Oh, so praise, praise the God. Lord for that. We hope you had a great uh, Thanksgiving. Linda and I uh, went to Indiana and got to see uh, my family and got to see her family, got to see some of our church family from there and celebrate with them in a new building that they are in. And so we just had a wonderful time. It was kind of relaxing because we, we spread it out over three days as opposed to uh, sometimes 24, 48 hours uh, that we often get kidded by the kids about. But... Um, Anyway, it was a good time, and so praise the Lord for that. All right, anybody else? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, this is the season of giving thanks. In fact, every season is a season of giving thanks because we, Lord, are blessed by having you as our God, a God who is good, a God who provides for us in every way. And I just uh, praise you and thank you for all that you're doing. I ask, Lord, that uh, you would use this hour that we're in to be able to, uh, to speak to us, allow us to hear from you, hear from your word, and allow that word to change us into someone different than when we came in, that we might uh, hear from you and be uh, rejoicing when we leave because of all that you have done. Thank you for uh, all these praises that have been mentioned. We lift them to you as a, a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips. And we, uh, we ask, Lord, that you would rejoice in our praises today. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Would you stand?
you stand with us as we sing Make Me a Blessing. This is um, just a closer walk with thee. I am weak. But thou art strong, Jesus, keep me from all wrong, and I'll be satisfied upon as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just 
the quilter walked with thee. Grant that ye fulfill my plea. And they be walking close to be. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be through this world of boils and fairs. If my father, Lord, who stand with us as we sing there's none like you
Thank you, praise team, and thank you, Gary, for that special music. I enjoyed that very much. Matthew chapter 8 is our text for today. And if you have a scripture there close by you, I hope that you'll find that. In just a minute, we'll be reading that passage together. Before I begin, I have a question for you. If you could ask just one thing of Jesus and he would answer it, what would that be? Some might say, heal me. We're going to see that in the passage. Some, more, some might say, um, troubles that are in one's life, remove them from me. If you had one thing to ask Jesus and he would respond, what would that be? We're in this passage of scripture, it says, when the sovereign speaks. Sovereign means one who is in control of all things. And Jesus is in control of all things. He has all knowledge. He has all power. He has all wisdom. He is in control of all things. Everything in the universe that he has created, he is sovereignly in control of all things. To say it another way, it means that he has all power and all wisdom and all authority to do anything that he chooses to do. And when Jesus came, it's important for us to understand this concept before we go any further in these portraits of Jesus, when he came, he left heaven and came to earth. When he left heaven, he was the king of kings and the lord of lords. Still is. But when he left, he was king of kings. The Revelation book gives us a picture of what that looked like. There are angels that are singing around his throne giving glory to him 24 hours a day, seven days a week, although there is no time in heaven. Angels giving him praise and honor and glory in the multitudes, thousands times ten, uh, thousands times a thousand, and ten thousand times ten thousand angels giving him praise and giving him glory. And Jesus would leave all of that to come here to earth. Not as a king in which everyone would bow down to him like they were in heaven, but as a baby born in a manger. Not in a house, not in a hospital, but born in a feeding trough of animals. He humbled himself and he took on flesh to become one of us so that he might be able to relay to us the love of God in heaven. Remarkable. Now what we need to know about that is is that when he took on flesh, he was 100% man, but he was still 100% God. He laid down his royalty but he didn't lay down his godship. He was as much God here upon the earth as he was ever in God in heaven. And he was as much a man as you and I are here upon the earth. Jesus had physical limitations. He had emotions. He had temptations. He became hungry. He became tired. He became sad. He also showed compassion on those who were in need and experienced the pain of being betrayed. And in his humanness, Jesus was a perfect representation of what it means to be a human. The only one who ever did it exactly right. And in fact, no one of us has ever even come close. But in his godship, in his divine nature, 
He was able to forgive sin. He was able to perform miracles. He was able to accept worship from other people. The New Testament describes him as the eternal word of God that became flesh. And we give him the name at this time of year, especially Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus had all power to speak whatever he desired to speak. And whatever he spoke happened. In fact, in the very beginning, the first words recorded of God says, let there be light. And the next word says, and there was light. We're going to see five times in this, in this chapter, five times that Jesus speaks and things change. And we got to do it kind of quick because there's so many verses to be able to do it. But I saw this as I was preparing for this time. I didn't know we were going to have sickness, but the first two talk about sickness, okay? When I sent this to, um, to Norma earlier in the week, I didn't know all this was going to be happening. But it seems apropos uh, that we uh, address this this morning. Because when God speaks, Jesus speaks, the sovereign speaks, things change. Let's pray as we begin. Father, I just thank you that as we open your word this morning, and as we read your word, that your word would become alive to us. That it would be more than black and red words on a page. It would be the very words of God for us this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Will you stand with me as we honor the reading of God's word? Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. And when Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and he touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. And Jesus said to him, See that you do not tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. And when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. And Jesus said, I will go and heal him. And the centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell one go and he goes and that one come and he comes and I say to my servant do this and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he was astonished and he said to those following him. I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown out into the darkness where there, is, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. You may be seated. This morning I would like for us to look at, uh, at those five places that we're going to look at. And this first one is when the sovereign Jesus speaks, healing occurs. I am so glad that Jesus has power over sickness. Amen? I am so glad that when we can call upon him and he has, he has answered our prayers in the past, sickness has gone. I'm glad that when we get sick, it's not for a lifetime. I'm glad that when we're sick, that we have, we have 
the gift of doctors as they did in Jesus' time. One of Jesus' inner circle was a doctor. Jesus never said, hey, you need to stop that doctoring because I'm going to take care of all this. No, he uses doctors just as he did then, he does now. And so he comes into contact with a leper. And we saw that last week with the giving of thanksgiving. But here's another opportunity for Jesus to come in, into the presence of someone who had leprosy. Now, you might not understand it as I don't understand leprosy, unless we put it in a proper context. It might be that if you go back three years ago to the beginning of COVID, where people were dying all the time. And do you remember all the extremes that we were going to? In fact, for six weeks, they locked down the world. I mean, that's not an exaggeration. They locked down the world for six weeks and nothing was going on. Planes weren't flying in the air. Stores were closed. The only necessities that were open. And it was amazing what you went to and through to be able to keep from getting that. You remember you used to wipe down the boxes that came from, from the, the uh, delivering places? There were some people that were actually wiping down the boxes because they thought it, was, it could be on the surface of any and everything. We didn't know. And all the, all the fear that was going on would be related to someone who had leprosy. And as we said last week, if you had leprosy, you were an outcast. You were made to live away from the community of people. And the only friends and family that you had were other lepers that were there. And here was an opportunity for one to come. And he probably would have to, had to have done what was required by the law. And that is to announce himself as unclean. Unclean! Unclean! So that people would know, stay away from this one. But Jesus has another idea. The man came and knelt before Jesus and said to him, what an appropriate way to address Jesus. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Word had spread already around the world that was known to them at that time that this Jesus, whether he was in the north, in Galilee, or in the south, in Judea, he was, a, he was a healer. He was one who could make you clean. I like the fact that Jesus didn't turn him away. Jesus didn't treat him like he had a, 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 uh, an infectious disease. It says that he reached out his hand and he touched the man and said, I am willing. Be clean. Two words brought about complete healing. Two words, the next line says, and immediately he was cured of his leprosy. Immediately he was cured. Jesus then goes into Capernaum, the place of his hometown, grew up in Nazareth, moved to Capernaum, and there as he comes into the city, a centurion comes. A centurion was a Roman citizen. A centurion was a man of authority. A centurion, by definition, was a man who was at least over a hundred other men. He had a hundred soldiers under him. Centurion. But here is a man who had a great need. A servant of his was lying at home, a servant that he loved. In fact, if you're watching uh, the series uh, of Jesus, you're going to see this played out, I think, in season four. Pretty sure you're going to see it as it's coming about. The centurion comes and asks for help. Lord, another good way to start, right? My servant lies at home, paralyzed and in terrible suffering. He must have loved him. 
He was a man in authority, but yet he loved his servant that was there taking care of him. And so Jesus said, well, I'll go with you. And the man said, no, Jesus, I know who you are. And more importantly, I know who I am. And I don't deserve one like you to be even under the roof that I am in. I believe, Jesus, all you have to do is to say the word. If you just say the word, you don't have to be in his presence. You don't have to be with him. You don't have to lay hands upon him. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to say a prayer over him. Just say the word. I believe that he will be healed. How much faith do we have today? Here's a centurion that wasn't really even probably a part of the Jewish people at all, not a people of the promise, not a people of the book, not a people of the line of, of David or even Abraham. But yet he had faith to be able to come to Jesus when he needed him. And he said, will you help me? Jesus' response is a response that I think you and I would have more often if we would do what these two men did. You see, I think we have not often because we ask not. If we would come more to Jesus and say, Lord, help me, or Lord, you can make me clean, or Lord, you can remove this from me, you can take this out of my life, whatever it is we ask of him, we need to ask of him. Because sometimes we just stew about it and it keeps us awake at night. Being troubled with troubles that we do not have any control over when we could go and present ourselves before God and say, Jesus, Lord, will you do this for me? One example, a leper, I'm willing. Second example, centurion, yes, I'll do that. And in fact, he says, <clears throat> and Jesus said to the centurion, go, it will be done for you as you believed it would. We must have faith. When we come to God and we ask God for things, it is, uh, James tells us we're not to be like the waves of the ocean being tossed to and fro, back and forth, willy wony, willy wony. We must have faith that he will hear us, and when he hears us, he will do his perfect will in our lives. You do know that every time you pray and every time I pray that we do get an answer. It is either yes, or it is no, or it is not now. We don't like the last one. Because we think that we ought to be like a drive through going through McDonald's. Can I help you? Yeah, I want a number one. Supersize it. I don't even know where a number one is. But <clears throat> you go around the corner and there it is. You give them a little money and they give you the thing and you're off and going. That is not God. God is not McDonald's. And you can quote me on that. Pardon? Famous. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think he'd be more famous <clears throat> if we just knew him as God. Yeah. Point number two is when sovereign Jesus speaks, nature obeys. We have to jump down in Scripture a little bit. We're going to jump past 14, but I want to read it to you just really quick. When Jesus came to Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on them. And when evening came, many were demon-possessed, were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word, with a word. And he healed all the sick. And this was to fulfill what, the, uh, what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and he carried 
our diseases. With a word, he healed. With a word, he spoke. And the demon possessed were delivered and cleansed. We're going to jump by 18. I promise we'll come back. 18 to 22. Verse 23. Jesus speaks over nature. And then he got into a boat with his disciples, uh, and his disciples followed him. And without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. And the disciples went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. And he replied, You have little faith. Why are you so afraid? And then he got up and he rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely calm. And the men, the, the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this, that even the winds and the waves obey him? The disciples were in a storm. Jesus was in a storm. The disciples were freaking out. Jesus was sleeping. Tell me who's in control. The disciples have to wake Jesus up from the sleep of the storm that they're in in order for Jesus to be able to do what they wanted him to do. Mark's account says that he stood up and he says, quiet be still. Three words. And the wind stopped and the waves quit crashing and it was completely calm. To the point where now I believe the disciples are probably more afraid now than they were in the storm. Who in the world is in this boat with us? Who is this one who can say a word? And the sea and the waves and the wind obeys him. Have a storm in your life? Matthew chapter 8 tells us that the one who speaks can calm the storms of the sea and he can calm the storms of your life. See, there's a part of this that is missing from the first two. The part of this is the disciples are not humbling themselves before God. They're screaming, help us. We're going to drown. And maybe we're in a drowning situation now. They knew who to go to. If we were to humble ourselves before him and say, Lord, take this storm and make it as calm as as a sea in the eighth chapter of Matthew. Nature obeys, but also demons flee. Verse 28, when Jesus arrived at the other side in the region of the Gerardines, a demon-possessed, two demon-possessed Men, coming from the tombs, met him. They were violent, and no one could pass that way. What do you want from us, son of God, they shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from them was a large herd of pigs that were feeding. And the demons begged Jesus if you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. And Jesus said to them, there's one word, go. And they came out and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and died in the water. And those tending the pigs ran off and went to the town and reported all this, including what had happened in, uh, to the demon-possessed men. 
And then the whole town went to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they pleaded for him, pleaded with him to leave their region. I remember preaching on this a number of years ago. And honestly, as I was preaching through this, it came to me that pigs with the demons in them ran down the hill, jumped into the water and drowned. You know, it's like the Lord said, that is suicide. Suicide, really. <clears throat> Pigs with demons in them run into the water and drown. Go, he said. Go. That's all he says. You know, the scripture says that we do not fight amongst ourselves with flesh and blood in a real sense. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For we wrestle, wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against rulers in, this, in the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're really wrestling against the spirit of this world in the darkness of this age. And some of you here have been, have been rescued out of the darkness. This kingdom that is ran by, by Satan is really a kingdom here upon the earth. You might not see him as you do not see Jesus, but you see the effects of Satan all over the place. You can watch it six o'clock, every night on television, and if you have 24-hour news, you can watch it every day, all day long. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against the powers, against the rulers of this dark world. But we have one who fights for us as he did in this. And it wasn't much of a fight. Here is, here is two men who seem to be so violent that no one can pass by them. But they come to Jesus, and it's interesting that there doesn't seem to be a formal invitation, a formal even recognition of who Jesus is. They know who he is. Can I tell you that Satan knows who Jesus is probably better than you and I do? And the demons certainly know who he is because it says... <clears throat> they said to him, what do you want with us, son of God? We know who you are. Have you come here early to torment us before our appointed time, according to Revelation chapter 20? Have you come and come ahead of time? Send us into the pigs. Drive us out if you must. And Jesus says, go. We sing a song of Martin Luther's. It's called, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And one of the verses says, And though this world with devil, devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fail him. Just one word from our God, and Satan comes crashing down. In our presence, Satan will flee from us, as Scripture says in, in Ephesians I believe that, we, that when Satan comes in our midst, that we're to resist the devil and he will flee from us. We do not resist in our own strength because Satan and his demons are not afraid of us. They are more powerful than us, but he is not and they are not more powerful than we are with, with God in us. God's spirit in us. You see, we have a bodyguard who watches over us and he is stronger and has more power than in 
and than is needed in every situation. I conclude with this. When sovereign Jesus speaks, salvation is near. I told you I'd go back. I told you to go back to verse 18, and I will. The cost of following Jesus, verse 18. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus replied, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Now that might sound harsh to you, the second one, until you know a little bit about the Jewish culture. It's believed by his statement there, Lord, let me first bury my father, that you would think that his father had died. But in Jewish culture, you buried the person who died within 24 hours. So why is this man with Jesus if his father has died? He should be burying him right now. Unless he is just thinking, you know what? I will follow you, but wait until my father dies. Or wait until my parents pass. And then I'll have more time. I'll be able to follow you then and be able to give you what you what are demanding of me, but I can't right now. Or the other one who says, <clears throat> Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus says, Foxes have holes, and birds have nests, but I do not even own a place to lay my head. Are you willing to follow me now? Are you willing to follow me and to forsake all the stuff that is the world has to offer and to follow me? The question of both of these is, am I Lord of all? Because if I'm not Lord of all, I'm not Lord at all. And Jesus is here speaking to them and saying, this is what I want you to know. As I am here and Lord and able to speak into the and heal people, and I'm able to speak into nature and change nature, and I'm able to speak into Satan's demons and overcome them, I also am able to speak into you and change you. I heard somebody recently say, about Orville Baptist Church. You're that church that has a gospel invitation at the end of each service, aren't you? You talk a lot about being saved, don't you? You know what? Jesus talked a lot about being saved. Read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Read the red words. The words that Jesus supposedly said. See how many times Jesus talks about salvation. He did it over and over and over again. He did it all the time. Nicodemus, you must be born again. And if you're not born again, you'll never see the kingdom of heaven. Sermon on the Mount, right before he is here. Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Or healing of a paralytic man who was carried before Jesus with four of his friends on a cot and lowered below Jesus, lowered in front of Jesus through a roof. And Jesus said, Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? Or get up and walk. 
but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. He tells the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat, and go home. He has authority on earth. This one who came from heaven, who has all authority, has come to earth and has all authority, and he says, I have authority on earth to forgive sin, and he could do it today. How about the woman at the well? Jesus meets at a divine appointment. In the middle of the day, a lady comes and speaks to him, and they have a conversation, and she leaves a moment at a well never to be the same again because Jesus has brought salvation to her life. And she runs back to town with such great joy, and she tells everyone, there's one out at the well. I think he's the Messiah. I think he's the one who's come to save us. And when they make their way out, they say, we came because we believed her, but now we see you and we know that you are the Son of God who has come to save us. Wow. It's no surprise that the scripture says there is more rejoicing in heaven over one who repents than the 99 who are righteous. There is great rejoicing in heaven over one who repents of their sin and turns from their way and embraces the way of Christ. Jesus said at one time, you'll always have the poor among you. We seem to live in a gospel situ- uh, a social gospel world where it's not about Jesus saving sinners. It's about us helping people, helping the poor, helping this. And Jesus was all into that, but that isn't why he came. He says, the poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. In other words, choose wisely what you're going to do. What will you ask? If you could ask Jesus one thing. I think the most important thing to ask the Savior of the world is, Lord, Save me. Save me. The mystery of Jesus coming to earth continues to captivate hearts and stirs our imagination and it transforms our lives because Jesus really is sovereign over all the affairs of this world, including you and me. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. And thank you, Lord, for the word that you've given us in five different scenarios. You spoke and things changed. And then you leave us with one important application. For you told uh, the man who came, the centurion who wanted his servant healed, you responded with something very ironic. You moved from a man whose servant is sick and is asking to be healed to salvation. You said there is a time coming when People will come from the east and from the west to join at the banquet of the banquet table of Jacob and Isaac and Abraham. For they will be there. They will be there at that great banquet time when all God's people are gathered together. They will come. Because you will speak and your word will go out and your word will say, come and people who have put their trust in you will hear the call and they will come and gather around a great banquet table and their name placard will be there for them waiting. But he says also the subjects of that kingdom. In this case, the Jewish people who he called and whom they turned their 
backs upon him, he said they will be cast out, will be removed from the kingdom, will find another place of refuge, a place away from you. I pray, Lord, that in this moment that maybe there's someone here that would just hear your word and would ask the question, Lord, what is it that I could best ask of you today? And in the quietness of their heart, they would hear you say, save me, save me. Father, we do have an invitation hymn and we call people to leave from where they're at and come and, and to rejoice with what God has done in their life today. And we will rejoice, as the scripture says, the angels in heaven rejoice more over one who repents and becomes a part of the kingdom than in 99 who are already there. And I pray, Lord, that you would allow your spirit to move in freely among these who are here, those on the internet. Father, I would love nothing better than to be able to spend eternity with each and every one who's here. And the way in which we do that is to make you Lord and Savior of our lives, allowing our trust and our belief in your death on the cross for the payment of our sins and the resurrection from the dead to be our salvation, the good news that Jesus has come to save us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Would you stand and would you come if God has spoken? Thank you for being here. We have a couple of, be seated just one more second. We have a couple of things that are on calendar coming up next Sunday night. Um, is it Rob Vernon? Brent. 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 There he is. What a handsome looking guy that guy is. Um, <clears throat> he's going to be here next Sunday night. And um, he is going to come. I hope you invite somebody to come with you. I have listened to him. Jim Ball's listened to him. I tell you what, he is one of the most talented guys I think I've ever heard of. Uh, of all the skills that he has, and he's given them to the Lord. The guy goes all over the country. Has somewhere between 100 and 200 concerts a year. And um, every weekend is uh, proclaiming the good news of Christ in song. He's going to do a Christmas concert for us. And so I hope that you'll be here for that. Okay. Also, I want to let you know as well, uh, we're not going to have Wednesday Bible study this week. Okay. I know that was in the bulletin last week, but we're not going to have it this week. And I'll tell you why. Because I need a prayer request as well. Um, I told her Sunday school class, Linda has a great heart, okay? It, it works really, really well, and she blesses a lot of people, except that physical heart is not working really good right now. And so uh, she is going to go in Wednesday and have a heart catheterization. 
and they've said they found some stuff that they'd like to look at and so um, and they haven't given us a time yet so not knowing what time that's going to be uh, I just say hey will you pray for us on that day uh, that we are we're gone and uh, hopefully we'll be home uh, shortly after that and nothing more will need to be done okay uh, don't know that that's the case but uh, that's um, that's where we're at right now okay and then on the 17th, Cindy, yes. you have something as well. We do. Yes. Can I back up and do the ninth first? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. Does the ninth come before 17? Yeah. What's going on around here? Um, on the ninth, we have at 4 o'clock in the afternoon for the entire church, we have Christmas caroling to some of our uh, members that can't come uh, because they're shut ins. And so we're going to go on Christmas carol for them at four o'clock, that is the entire church at four o'clock. We're gonna meet here, um, unless I talk to you ahead of time, and then there may be another place that you're gonna meet, but most of you will meet here. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. There's little carolers on it, so yeah, little elf carolers, so sign up there. And then also on the ninth, prime timers only. That's anybody 50 and older, which is most of us in this room. There are a few that aren't 50, but. <laughs> That's most of us in this room. Um, you are invited to our Christmas party. First one that we're going to be having. Sis and I worked really hard on this. And uh, so I hope you'll come. Uh, there's also a sign-up sheet in the back up there so we know how many are coming. And you can kind of sign up and, and put what you're going to bring. There's an ideas list there about what to bring. So all of that is on the 9th. And then on the 17th in the evening at 6 o'clock, we have our Christmas candlelight service is going to be happening. It's going to be a combination of the candlelight service as well as um, the cantata. So those of you that are in the choir, um, you need to meet back in my room uh, today after church. There's not very many of us, but we will have our quartet and um, <laughs> we will practice. So that's coming on the 17th at 6 o'clock. And then we're going to go backwards one more time on the 3rd, Sunday the 3rd, when Brent Vernon is here, we are also going to have, Wings is planning on going to uh, Amish country sometime in the summer, and um, the uh, tickets for that are gonna be kind of expensive, and so because of that, we are doing a fundraiser, and we hope that you will come and, and support that so that we can lower the price of the tickets a little bit on that. And I do believe they have that little video clip again. Guys, do you have that recipe? How does it taste as good? Does it smell? Oh, wait, wait, it's good. Hey, ladies, we are so excited to tell you about what's coming in June. Uh, we're going to be taking a trip to Sugar Creek to the Ohio Star Theater to see the production of Ruth. Um, it is a Psyche Sound production. They have partnered with the Psyche Sound Theater, and we want to be a part of this. So what we're doing is we are making rock candy to sell. Um, to we're gonna, what we're going to do is try to make the cost of the tickets a little lower for us. Um, we are making rock candy that we're going to be selling starting December 2nd, or the 3rd, whatever that first Sunday is in December, and we're going to make it available to you. Um, these make great stocking stuffers, cute little Christmas gifts for like the mailman or whatever you want to do, or your hairstylist. Um, so please, um, please reach out and um, help support the ladies. This is for the Wings event. This is June. Can't we do the Yeah. I mean, it's going to be all different flavors, all mixed in one bag. We are going to have um, root beer, cinnamon, either wintergreen or spearmint, strawberry or cherry, all right isn't that great so next sunday before uh or maybe after service Probably as well service. Uh, you'll be able to do that i have one more announcement and uh, that involves miss chi chi are you ready this morning are you ready to make that announcement you want to wait okay Okay. And she bumped her knee when she had a surgery, so we'll go on backwards again. Oh. But uh, I want to wait until she's able to come with her husband and my grandson here by this occasion of her. 
I see. All right, all right. Right, I understand. Yes, I remember talking to her. She was in a bad, bad way and just had surgery, so she's recovering. And so we'll wait on that, that announcement a little bit. Okay, all right. That sounds good. All right. Well, let's uh, let's be closed in. Oh, yes, Pat. I have an announcement for the uh, secret sisters. Uh huh. All right, all right. Next Saturday at 10 o'clock. All right, okay. Now let's close in a word of prayer. <laughs> Father of heaven, we thank you. We thank you that you in your great wisdom saw fit to see upon us as needed mercy recipients. And that you left uh, your heavenly throne sending your son to us to be able to be our savior, our redeemer. And I praise you and thank you for that. I ask, Lord, that you would go with us now as we go into this week, that we might uh, carry the light that you have given to us, that others might see Christ in our lives. Thank you for all that you do. Be with those, Lord, that are sick and aren't able to be with us today. I pray, Lord, that your blessing would be upon them. Give them, Lord, a touch of healing like you did the leper and like you did the centurion. You can do that. And for that we ask, in Jesus' name, amen.